This story starts off in 2015 when my wife, Maria, and I were both 44 and 45. Until this point, we were both happily married for 18 years with two amazing young sons. We were both very much in love, at least I thought. Our sex life wasn't brilliant, but we had other ways of showing affection. We also had never ever had any rough periods in our marriage at all. I myself am self-employed as a plumber, and I've been doing this business since around 2009. And at the time, Maria was a pharmacist, and we were both going strong in our careers and were both earning a decent amount. One night, when our sons were in bed, me and Maria were downstairs, and we decided to watch a film together on Netflix. We started watching this film about how a poor girl who had been in poverty her whole life then joined an escorting agency. The girl mentioned in the film how she was earning around $1,000 per client. When the girl said this, Maria's response was, And here is me spending hours a day in a pharmacy earning the same amount a year as she does in a month. When she said this, I didn't think anything of it and just replied with, Yeah. After that, we enjoyed the film and once it ended, we went to sleep. After that evening, our life was completely normal until about one month later. It was just another usual work day, and I came home at around 3 p.m. after finishing a job I had and picking up the kids from school, who were both seven. At around 5 p.m., I got a text from Maria saying that she was going for a drink with her friend after work for a while to catch up, which I said was fine. So, I fed the kids and put them to sleep. I was just watching football on TV and hadn't even realized the time when my wife came home at around 8 p.m. I presumed she must have just been having a good time with her friend, so I didn't question her about anything apart from asking her how it went. Straight after that though, she went up and had a shower and we both went to sleep as usual. Fast forward to the weekend, Maria said she was going out to the town center for shopping as she hadn't been in ages. I offered to drop her off, but she politely said she would take her car, so she went and I stayed home and did household chores. Maria had been gone for four hours and I hadn't heard from her, so I rang her up to see when she was going to be back, but she didn't answer. So I texted her asking when she'll be back. She didn't read it. So I waited roughly half an hour and rang her again, but she still didn't pick up. At this point, I started to get a bit worried. I tried ringing her again and again for around 45 minutes, but she didn't pick up too. Then eventually, after being out for a total of seven hours, she rang me up and said she was really sorry that she hadn't answered. She claimed that her phone was out of power and she had to find and sit somewhere for it to charge. I believed her and forgave her, and when she came home, we hugged, and we said the usual I love you to each other, and she then went to the shower. At this point, I still hadn't suspected a single thing. I suspected nothing of her for a whole three months after that and life then went on. During these three months, there were a few occasions when she would meet up with a friend, and I just let her go. Then there were also a few times where she would work late and she would say she's at the pharmacy till the shop closes or something like that, and I would believe her. She also started working a lot more frequently on Sundays. She did this sometimes anyway, but in this period of time, she was doing it a lot more than usual. I also continued working like normal throughout this time. Then one Friday, Maria came home from the pharmacy and said that she had been invited to spend the night at her friend's house. I thought this was a little weird, as this friend she was staying at usually met with Maria a lot of the time anyway, so I wondered why Maria wants to stay over at her house all of a sudden. Without questioning, I just agreed with her and offered to drop her off, but she said she'll just drive. After she left that evening, it was just me and the boys. They were just playing on their own, and I was getting a little bored, so then I decided that I could ask Maria's friend's husband, Dean if he wants to come over for a pint, as we both were quite good friends. I then proceed to ring Dean up, and I asked him, whilst the ladies gossip at your house, do you want to come over to mine for a pint? He just replied with, what do you mean? My wife is at home only with me. 
It was at that moment my heart dropped. I then asked him if he was joking, but he said he was being dead serious. I could even hear his wife in the background saying it was only the two of them at home. I ended the call and just stood up and thought for a moment. I decided to ring up Maria, but she didn't reply. I rang her three more times after that, but she still didn't answer. I also texted her about ten times, asking if she was okay, but still she didn't reply. I then put the kids to bed and was considering calling the police until I got a call from Maria saying that she was very sorry for making me worry so much. She said over the phone that she meant she was going to see her other friend and that she gave me the wrong name by accident and didn't answer the phone because they went out for dinner. I then felt really relieved but told her to keep her phone on. After saying goodnight to her, I went to bed and kept thinking to myself, at least she's alright. But one thing that kept troubling me was why was she at dinner for such a long time. I stopped thinking and went to sleep. Then the next day at around 1 p.m., she arrived home and acted completely normal. I asked her how it was, and all she told me was that she and her friend just relaxed, chatted, and had a meal. We then went on as usual for a week until I got home one day and the postman came to deliver a parcel to our house which was addressed to Maria. She hardly ever order things, so I waited until she came home to give it to her. She said, Oh, that must be my new phone. When she said that, I answered, But you already got a new phone a few months ago, which I got you. She then said, Oh yeah, but I wanted a bigger one, so I bought myself a new one. Despite feeling a little down and confused why she bought a new phone, iPhone 6 Plus at the time, I let it be. Fast forward two days later. She comes home from work with a brand new hair curler and hair dryer, which she bought after work, and they were a really expensive brand too. I asked her why she is spending and essentially wasting so much money on things she already has. Her reply was, Oh, I never buy myself nice new things, so I thought I would treat myself. This wasn't like her, but I just again let it slide, although it was bothering me. Bear in mind, her birthday was in about six weeks and I could have gotten her gifts. Fast forward about another week. We were just sitting at our dinner table with the boys chatting as usual as we ate when I saw Maria wearing a brand new sparkling clean Pandora bracelet with a few fancy gems on it. I asked her when she got it. She said, Oh yeah. I forgot to tell you I bought a new bracelet. Do you like it? I responded with, It's lovely. But why are you spending so much money all of a sudden on things which aren't necessary? It's your birthday in just over a month. This clearly bothered her that I was questioning her, and she said to me in a slightly angry voice, Come on, I never buy myself things, and I just really wanted it. And for my birthday, I don't want any gifts from you. All I want is to spend time with you. After this, we ate in silence as we didn't want to argue in front of the kids. However, that had made me reach a tipping point, and I did have a strange feeling in my head. Before we went to sleep that night, I told Maria that I'm really glad that she's buying these lovely things and enjoying them, but she should please be careful with how she spends. She then said she was sorry, and she'll be careful from now on. After that, we kissed and went to sleep. That feeling in my head had calmed down now, but I still had questions. Where is she getting the spare money from? Three more weeks pass, two weeks and three days actually. And one Saturday night, Maria said she was going out with her boss, who is a woman, and another colleague, who is also a woman, for a drink at a bar. I spent the next few hours at home with the kids. Then here's where things got really interesting. At around 9 p.m., I get a phone call from one of my friends, whom I haven't spoken with for a few weeks so I wondered why he was calling. I picked the phone up, and he tells me that he is at a pub and has seen my wife sitting with a man about the same age as me and that she is dressed up in a very revealing dress and that he saw Maria and the man kiss a few times. When he said this, I was silent for a good 10 seconds. I responded with, excuse me. He said, mate, I'm being serious 
I was just walking back from the bathroom and saw them sat together at a table. I haven't said anything to them. When he said this, I thought he was just making it up. So I asked him to send a picture. But at the same time I was thinking, how do I know if she really went with her work colleagues? My friend then sent me a picture. It was a bit far as he didn't want to get caught taking the picture. But I zoomed in on it and my jaw dropped and heart sank. That woman was definitely Maria. She was sitting with another man and she was wearing such a low-cut dress that almost had her entire breasts sticking out in the open. I didn't even know she had a dress like that. I started shaking and was almost tearing up. So I asked my friend to tell me the address of the pub they were at. I then ran to the car, leaving the boys at home, and drove half an hour as fast as possible to the pub. I parked up and my mate was waiting outside for me. We both went in quickly and he pointed me towards Maria. I then looked at where he was pointing and completely froze. There she was, my wife of 18 years sat there laughing and giggling with a random man. All I could think of at this time in my head was, oh my gosh, she is cheating on me. She was wearing beautiful makeup. She never looked like that with me. Her new Pandora, red heels, and a dress which certainly gave the world a brilliant view of her very large breasts. Maria was the best dressed person in the whole bar. I just stood there staring at her. I then walked up to her and rubbed her shoulder. She turned and looked at me and immediately her face went from all happy and smiley to a face of horror. I said, Maria, what on earth are you doing here? And who is this man? She stood up and put her hands on my arms and said, Honey, it's just a work colleague meeting. Don't raise your voice. After she said that, I said, wearing a dress like that, not a chance. You're coming with me. So I picked her bag up and started walking out the bar with Maria following me as she said some random gibberish. During this time, the guy she was with was completely silent. We both sat in the car and she instantly burst out crying and sobbing. In a calm voice, I said to her, Now please tell me, Maria, who is that man? And how long has this been going on between you two? Still sobbing her eyes out, she replied with, No, we don't have a relationship and we're not dating. This was our first time meeting. I said, then who is he? And why are you wearing such a sexy dress? Maria then goes on to tell me that for the past few months, she has been working for a high-class escorting agency and that she quit her job as a pharmacist then too. All those times she has been coming home late, meeting a friend, she was actually spending time with her client. All the hours during the day I was made to believe she spent at the pharmacy, she was actually with clients all that time. She claimed that she just earned so much money from the first week of doing it that she quit her real job and did escorting full time. She didn't want to tell me as she knew I wouldn't allow it. This all explains why she was suddenly buying all these relatively expensive items. She told me she got the idea when we watched the film about the escort girl a few months ago and although it was a fictional character, she felt jealous and thought that she could be earning so much more. I just couldn't believe it. All this time, she has been doing all this because of a stupid film. Then I ask her a big question. Have you been sleeping with these clients? She said yes, which I wasn't surprised about. She then goes on to say how she wants me to forgive her and that she loves me and we can fix this and she'll stop working for the agency and she didn't have sex with every single client. By this time, I've had enough, so I drove her straight to her parents' house and left her there. When I got back home, I just sat in the corner of my room in silence, just processing the situation. All I could think of was, how could such a happy and perfect married life change so drastically in just a couple of months because of some stupid film? After this, there was a lot more talking and working things out, and in the end of it all, me and Maria got divorced. Since then, I look after the kids and she moved in with her parents. Every weekend, the boys get picked up and spend the weekend with her. Ever since, I have been living a happy single life. I realize I have written a lot here, so I apologize for writing so much. But honestly, 
I have missed out a lot of details, most particularly the bits around the time when I saw her in the bar and when we got in the car afterwards, the bits in the car when she told me everything. I am not able to describe it all, but I've written the main details. Thank you for listening to my story. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. See you next time.